As Hillary Clinton enjoys her history-making win for the Democratic Party, the GOP standard bearer Donald Trump is coming under sustained fire for comments many are calling racist. Can he move beyond yet another controversy caused by his campaign rhetoric and unify a fractured Republican Party? Let's talk about that with former United States Congressman Connie Mack. He comes from us, to us from Washington, D.C. Uh, Connie, as Hillary Clinton has now made history, what's your reaction that we now have a woman running for president? I think it's fantastic. I think it's a moment for uh, all Americans uh, to celebrate, and uh, you know, to to try to diminish that. I think is a mistake. That uh, it's a heck of an accomplishment, and we all should be uh, proud of her for uh, making that step and, and achieving what she's achieved. Well said, Donald Trump is the presumptive nominee. How do you feel about that? It's your party. You know, uh, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not happy. Uh, you know, let me just give you this reason. Um, the other day I was uh, with my son, we were driving, uh, we were in Florida, and he asked me about Donald Trump. And, uh, and I said, well, what, what do you think? You know, what, are, what do your friends think? And he said, uh, well, he's a bully and that he's afraid that he's gonna take us to war. Um, so my son is 13 years old and uh, those aren't the kind of messages I think the uh, potentially the next president of the United States wants to be delivering to the next generation uh, of leaders in America. So it concerns me a great deal the way that uh, Donald Trump talks down to, belittles, whether they're racist comments, bigoted comments, attacking women and uh, minorities, and whoever he thinks is a threat, um, he goes after it. I just. It's not something that I think uh, any of us should be proud of. Do you think the convention can make its own rules? It can do what it wants. It's a private convention, in a sense, covered by the public media. Do you think he will get the nomination in uh, Cleveland? Of course, uh, he will. Um, it is. They're going to make sure that that happens. Uh, there might be pushback, and and he may have to change his tone a little bit, which. Um, will be hard for him to do. And frankly, I think a lot of the voters, people that support him, uh, don't want to see him change. Uh, but, uh, you know, those are the things that happens. Uh, it is, it's, you know, the convention is its own entity. Um, but a lot of pressure will be put upon the committee uh, that runs the convention uh, to make sure that it uh, sort of frames the debate in a way that's, frankly, different than the public persona of Donald Trump. What does Connie Mack do in November? Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm really conflicted on this. Um, I wish I had another opportunity uh, or someone else that I could uh, support, uh, but I don't know what I'm going to do. I think, um, uh, you know, the, I, I'm not a, a big supporter of uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, I think there's a lot of challenges there, a lot of concerns that I have. Uh, with Benghazi and the email uh, issues and just sort of those leadership type issues and obviously for the reasons I mentioned earlier but what about Trump. what about country over party uh, again so to me I, I did not say that I would uh, you know one or the other because of party I, I well, specifically you're... have some challenges with uh, Hillary Clinton mm. as well so you don't uh, have to vote right I mean it's you know yeah you don't to have vote. to you don't have to, but it's, it, you know, it's, it's, a, um, it's a right that we have that uh, we should always uh, participate in. And so I'm going to take the time to really think about what I want to do and whether I want to support Trump uh, or if I want to find a, a, if I end up voting or writing in. I don't know. I don't know, Larry. It's too early, but uh, I'm, I'm not happy with where we are. I don't think uh, that we, uh, the, the best uh, choices are in front of us. On February 19th, you tweeted, what does Ron, the real Donald Trump have and Donald, Ronald Reagan have in common? And you said, absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, you know, I think that I, and I stand by that. Uh, I, you know, Ronald Reagan was, uh, whether you agreed with his policies or not, he was an inspirational uh, figure. He's someone that uh, you could look up to, that you could be proud of. Uh, that you felt like uh, was fighting for everyone uh, and did it in a way with class and dignity and grace. Uh, and uh, Donald Trump doesn't 
have those same characteristics, in my, in my view. You wonder what President Reagan would be saying now? I think he would be— um, Hurt. You know, in his own way, he would be uh, encouraging uh, Trump and encouraging the party as a whole to um, look to the future and have a message that is a positive message about the future for all Americans. A couple of other areas. You've been lobbying against the fiscal rescue plan for Puerto Rico now pending in Congress. You call the measure a bailout. Tell me what it says and why you're against it. Well, th so um, there's a financial control board, which I think is, is a good thing, and I think it's important. Uh, the island has, has shown that it cannot manage its, its uh, fiscal house. So having a control board like Washington, D.C. is important, and uh, I support that. Uh, and then the, comes the issue of how to deal with the debt, uh, $73 billion of debt. There's a payment that comes up July first. Uh, and there's a lot of misconceptions about what the bill does and what the bill doesn't do. And you don't have to look any further than to what the White House says the bill does and then what uh, the Republican leadership says the, how, uh, the bill does. So the, the, the White House says the bill uh, protects pensioners uh, and uh, sort of elevates the pensioners as far as, you know, who gets paid what and when. Uh, the Republican conference uh, or leadership says that the creditors, uh, that the rule of law and the Constitution uh, will be at the top of that order. Um, so you have the same bill with the same language and <laughs> both sides saying it does something completely different. Uh, same thing with the board. The White House says that the board is uh, secondary to the government. The uh, Congress, uh, the Republican leadership, says that it has supremacy. And what so, does Connie Mack say? Uh, I think that there's a lot of good things in the bill. There's a few concerns that, uh, that I still have. Uh, one is I think the language needs to be tightened up on ensuring that uh, the rules of the game aren't changed on people, uh, that when, you, when they bought these bonds that had the full faith and credit, uh, that that has to be respected uh, and complied with. That's one. Uh, two, I think there's an unconstitutional, in my opinion, stay of litigation uh, that is an end around to help elevate uh, the pensions over the uh, constitutional debt. And uh, I think that that is a mistake. It's the first time in history it's done it. It is interesting, and some people might like this, but it is interesting that uh, it, the stay was first introduced by Nancy Pelosi and Elizabeth Warren December 18th of last year. Uh, but that, that's got a, uh, it's, it's never been done before where you've had a litigation stay and basically taking the rights away of Americans uh, to access to the courts to uh, defend their property. What prompted your interest in this? Well, uh, so I work with a group that uh, is uh, representing uh, bondholders, geo bondholders. And, you know, so that, that's how I got involved. I but I've been... I've been involved in the Puerto Rico's issues when, from when I was a member and then beyond. Uh, I was one of the few Republicans that supported statehood for Puerto Rico. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, uh, Puerto Rico is, being from Florida, uh, yeah. it's, it's an important issue. It's a important great issue. place. It's, a, it's, a it's great. an important yeah. issue that we get right. Uh, and I just, I think it's, instead of passing something for the sake of passing something, the White House and the leadership need to um, clearly tell the members of Congress exactly what the bill does and doesn't do so there's not any misconceptions. Great talking with you, Connie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Larry.